So we're going to look at an example here um, using this definition for the derivative that we've introduced to determine the equation of a tangent line um, to this parabola at a particular point, so when x is equal to 1. So in this case, our, you know, our function, let's call it f of x, is 3x squared plus 5x plus 7. And, and so we want this point, right? So we know that the x value is 1. We want the corresponding y value. So that y value, of course, is simply f of 1. So we get 3 times 1 squared plus 5 times 1 minus 7, which gives us 1, right? 3 plus 5 is 8 minus 7 leaves with 1. Okay, so we know that the line is through the point 1, 1. And that's one piece of information we need to get the equation of a line. The other piece we need is the slope, right? So what do we know about the slope? We know that the slope call it m, is given by f prime of 1. So we come over to our definition, right? We're going to use the definition with c equal to 1. And it doesn't really matter which version you use. Um, maybe we'll even try it both ways and see how it goes. Um, let's use the first version of the definition. We'll see how that goes. So f prime of 1 is going to be the limit as x approaches 1 of, so we do, it's going to be f of x minus f of 1 over x minus 1. So that looks like the limit, x going to, sorry, x going to 1 of f of x. 3x squared plus 5x minus 7 minus one more. Over x minus 1. Okay. So, of course, if we try to do direct substitution, we're going to get 0 over 0 for this limit. We, we know that's going to happen. Um, so what we need to do is we need to simplify. So that numerator, let's just do a little bit of rough work up at the top. Uh, we have 3x squared plus 5x, now minus 8. And we want to factor that. Now we know, we, we can save ourselves a little bit of trouble here because we already know that x minus 1 is a factor, right? Because we know if we plug in x equals 1, we get 0. Okay, so then, we just have to figure out what the other factor is. And clearly, it's going to have to have a 3x out front. It's going to have to have an 8 on the other side. And we want to end up with a plus 5. So we're going to need a plus sign there. Okay. So once we realize that, we can put that result in. So x minus 1. 3x plus 8 over x minus 1. And of course, the whole point is that the x minus 1 factors cancel, leaving us with the limit of 3x plus 8. And let's maybe skip a step and plug in x equals 1. We get 11 for our slope. Okay? So 11 is the slope. So now we can come over here. We can put that in. And now we need to write down the equation of the line. There are a couple of ways to do this. The best way to write down the equation of a line is don't use the point intercept, right? So, so everyone kind of, you know, or slope intercept, right? Everyone is happy with mx plus b as a formula for, for the equation of a line. Um, but the trouble with this is you need to know the y-intercept, right? You need to know the y-value when x is 0. And, and that's not the point on the line that we have. The point on the line that we have is 1, 1, right? Because that's the point at which we're computing the tangent line. Um, so the other option is 
we do point slope. So here, x, x, we read this as x naught, y naught, x sub 0, y sub 0. Um, those are the coordinates of some particular point on the line. In this case, um, we have x naught equals 1, y naught equals 1, right? Coordinates of the point that we're given, the point at which we're finding the equation of the tangent line. Um, so we've got x naught, we've got y naught, we've got m, we have everything we need to write down the equation of the line. So the equation is y equals 1 plus 11 times x minus 1. Okay, And you can leave it like that. In fact, in a lot of cases, this is a preferable way of leaving the equation of your tangent line because frequently one of the things you want to do with the tangent line is you want to use it to get linear approximations. And you want to compute linear approximations when x is close to 1. And so you're going to be plugging in values of x like maybe 1.1 or 0 0.9, something like that. And typically it's easier to do it in this form here, where this just becomes the difference multiplied by 11, you add it to 1, uh, than if you simplify. But of course, if you really want to, you can write it as 11x plus or sorry, it's going to be minus 10, right? 11x minus 10, if you prefer that mx plus b4. Um, but for a lot of practical applications in calculus, you're going to want to, want to write it like this. OK, um, so we've done it. We found the equation. Uh, we're going to come back. We'll do it all over again. Maybe we'll change the point, and we'll change the definition that we're using, right, the formula. We have these two different formulas for the definition. We'll try out the other one and see how it goes.